Hey guys, welcome back to The Rock. I'm Chris with Rockford Ordnance. We are out at the range today. I've had a ton of comments lately on our ZPAP video, so I figured why not do a Yugo day. So today is Yugo day at the range. Figured I'd start the video out with our good old NPAP. Uh, I've had this gun forever and it's set up to fit me but we've got our zpap with us today we've got our uh, m70 ab2 we got a lot of good stuff to bring you you know that video brought up a lot of comments and there seems to be a ton of confusion over bulge trunnions non bulge trunnions 1.5 millimeter receivers one millimeter receivers all kinds of craziness and you know people are saying well you're wrong about this you're wrong about that no i'm not I'm absolutely on the money. I will say that I may have made it a bit confusing, so today we're gonna just clarify things. And we're gonna have fun doing a little shooting. So come on along, let's check out these guns and get right into the shooting. Well guys, what better way to start off a Yugo video than with the first Yugo I ever bought. And that is this gun. This is a Century Arms M70 AB2 underfolder. And I just love this gun. Um, completely as it came from Century. Um, we did get rid of the plastic and put some original wood on it and uh, an original sling, but other than that, it's as it came. It's got the grenade launcher. You can uh, launch, you know, uh, phony grenades uh, with a blank firing adapter. We've got tritium night sights that uh, came on these guns, but the tritium is worn out. You can get some replacement vials on, uh, to put in them, front and back. The front one flips up. Gotta grab it here and flip it up, and there's just a little vial in there so you can see it at night. Um, really a great gun. You know, people put Century down, but this was one of their successes. They subbed these out to some contractors and they put them together and I've had it for years. It's got thousands of rounds through it and it runs just great. Beautiful looking gun too. We've got an original Yugo bolt hold open mag in it. You can see the beautiful bluing that they did on these old Zestavas. Uh, Century, or whoever built it, decided to uh, you know, put this nice park finish on it. Still nice. Uh, it's got the push button in back to lock the cover on. Uh, because the Yugoslavians like to launch grenades, they put a cover on to make sure it didn't pop off. Um, we did this um, paracord on here just to uh, give us a little better cheek rest but uh, they shoot magnificently and uh, let's just see how the old girl's doing uh, we haven't shot it in a while and uh, I'm sure she's still on the money for those of you that don't know to deploy the folding stock you just push the button on this side and flip it over and you're good to go contrary to popular belief these are pretty comfortable they don't bother me at all um, I kind of like them so uh, nice decent triggers too they had tapco g2s in them i never bothered to replace it uh it works fine i did do a little work to it but uh yeah it's all right we gouged up our wood here doing some uh quick mag changes just slapping the mag out of it and the mag comes up and hits the wood but no big deal they all got dents from them the old wood that you see with some of the trench art and stuff you'll find them all dented up these were new old stock so kind of a shame but no big deal we put a little uh, oil on there and be good to go let's uh see how she does here all right guys we're ready to go here today we're shooting some 
Wolf uh, 123 grain, I believe, 122 grain, uh, full metal jacket. And, uh, you know, I usually shoot uh, Golden Tiger, but I like to keep that put away. So we ordered up a few cases of this and uh, using that for videos to bring you guys and all that good ammo. No problem with it. Um, I do have a short mag with me today for some bench work, but uh, I want to show you guys the bolt hold opens and uh, always good to make sure they run. Uh, we fill them up all the way to make sure they're going to run. You know, some guys load five rounds, ten rounds, whatever. Well, doesn't let you know if those mags are feeding properly when fully loaded. So always load them full. You don't have, it doesn't mean you have to shoot at all, but uh, you know, it gives you a better idea of if your mags are working. Let's see what we can do here, ladies and gentlemen. Got a target set up down there, but uh, yeah, it's probably close to 100 yards. Let's go see how we did, shall we? Hey guys, I said 100 yards. We're about 75 yards here. But uh, before we started filming, took a shot at some steel plate we had out here. I forgot the uprights to hang it, so I just set it up here and I took a couple shots. I want to show you what happened here. So there's the steel target. And I had just painted it, we hit it twice. You see the splatter on there? Well, let's say that was your body armor, okay? Look at this target. I don't know if you can see this, but do you see the rips where it's balled out on us there? Some came up there. I mean, it went all the way up the target. All the way up, look at the face where it hit. And up here and you know even out here there's one but you can see all the rips what look like rips that's what happens when it hits you uh, in the plate and then the pieces come apart and uh, just another reason to have a good anti-spall coating on your plates some of those probably could do a number on you i know it's paper but think about it coming up into your chin and whatnot would not be fun. Anyhow, here's the five shots we took. Again, uh, it's sighted in at uh, 100 meters and we're about 70, 75 here. And iron sights. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. Having a hard time seeing that black post on the black target. Should get green targets, but uh, not bad. It's probably... Well, these four here are probably two MOA, and then that uh, high one there, but not too bad for iron sights. Anyhow, let's get back. So guys, here is our trusty NPAP. And, you know, part of the controversy on that video, uh, I think probably stemmed from this, because I was, talking about a ZPAP and I showed this and I said I essentially have one and I held this up and it's an NPAP and guys are like well that and I explained the receiver and everything on this and the guys are like well that's not a ZPAP it's totally different doesn't have bulge trunnions etc if a lot of you remember when the ZPAP first came out it didn't have bulge trunnions. It was a regular trunnion gun, regular one millimeter receiver. It was essentially an NPAP. It wasn't until later that, I don't know, the next model year or when the changeover happened, but they then went to the bulge trunnion guns. And then a year after that, they went to the chrome line barrel. 
So what I meant by that was, okay, this is just like the original ZPAP when it came out. These NPAPs were one millimeter receivers, standard trunnions. Um, there may be a different uh, rivet pattern in the back. They switched over um, sometime on the NPAPs and then I think, I'm not positive they made a change on the ZPAP. I'll have to take a look at our ZPAP here. But these NPAPs were out for years. There were a, earlier iterations of the PAP that came in. You know, there were single stacks that came in first, then uh, uh, companies switched and all kinds of stuff. Uh, they ended up hogging them out. Some of the original PAP guns uh, sold to uh, the consumer with uh, a double stack mag opening, but a single stack bolt. Some ran, some didn't. And then the NPAP kind of settled in. There was also the OPAP. And that was the bulge trunnion gun with uh, the one and a half millimeter receiver. So that was the difference. You always had the NPAPs and the OPAPs kind of side by side. And uh, yeah, so that's what I was talking about. The confusion was, oh no, ZPAPs have 1.5. Well, yes, they do now, but they didn't originally. They were originally, you know, maybe what was left over. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah. So we've got this, and this thing's done to uh, fit me, and uh, it works really well. This is one of those guns where I can pull it out of the safe and nothing changes. It always stays perfect. Uh, I don't have to mess with it, and it always runs, always works, always comfortable, and very accurate. Uh, let's take a few shots and see what you all think. I'm going to switch to a uh, headshot down here. If you notice, guys, uh, I brought a bunch of different mags. I bought the, brought the bolt hold opens uh, for the ZPAP and the M70 AB2. This uh, just brought a matching uh, mag pull, but I've got a bunch of others. All of them fit all of my Yugos and uh, work really well. Don't have any problems running any mags. They, these things will run everything. So let's go down and take a look how this one did. Yeah, guys, that trusty NPAP, it, uh, I just love that gun. It, it, I set it up for me. It's got a BD2 muzzle brake on it. Uh, we've got a cheese grater uh, dust cover on it. Um, we put the handguard on it, aluminum billet uh, handguard, and uh, three by primary arm scope with a RS regulate mount. Just a nice, nice gun. Let's take a look here and I'll kind of show you the difference as to what that three by can do. So, there's our three power scope. Uh, just some quickie up there. But uh, yeah, here's what we started out with. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Might be a couple others in there, but uh, just nice, accurate gun and easy to shoot. Works and works well.
So guys, you've seen this baby out in a few videos recently. It is our ZPAP, and we got one with the maple wood. It's all flamed out up here. The grip's kind of normal. It's got some flaming through here, and the stock has a little too, but the stock's a little darker in some when you look in some light, but uh, just a pretty gun. They ship it with these newer uh, Croatian uh, bolt hold open mags and unlike the bluing that you saw on the older ones these are parked uh, like the gun is so let's get into the differences I don't know if you can see my end pap down here I'm having some problems guys I hurt my wrist really bad I should have a uh, wrist brace on right now and I'm not just because it's a pain but to lift anything really hurts. I screwed it up really bad. I don't know. They x-rayed it. It's not broke. But it's probably uh, ligament damage or something like that. So I'm going to have to uh, get it checked out again. But let's talk about these guns, right? Uh, when you go from the tip back. I hope you can see this. It's kind of dark with sun in behind me here. But... Um, essentially the same front sight block no difference uh, they have the bayonet uh, uh, opening here to hold it same uh, gas block really really machine nicely on these guns that's the nice thing I love about Yugos is the machining is done so well you don't see a ton of swirl marks as the mill pass by that kind of thing uh, up front, these guns are identical. You've got barrel profiles, identical, uh, cleaning rod. Obviously, Yugos have a longer handguard. This one we put the TDI on, the M-Lock. Um, I did some videos on that for them. Super, super nice handguard and super light. Normally have a light on here, but uh, yeah, works out really well. Um, even the sight leafs are the same. Um, identical thousand meters uh, nothing different this obviously we have the uh, three by primary arms prism scope on same top covers they both utilize a heavier top cover they both have the pins that are uh, securing that top cover where we get different is right here right the trunnions so this has the standard trunnion and if you can see, let's see if I get this out of the way enough, uh, you can see the bulge trunnions here. I'll put this down. It's just bothering my wrist. Oh, God. Um, bulge trunnions here. And then the receiver difference, right? Other than that, uh, the same. They both have optic mounts. The wood that originally comes on some of these end paps. <laughs> Let's just say it's a canoe paddle. I mean, they're not your standard com block uh, stocks. They're huge, and they've got a high comb, which is good for optics, but they, uh, they really kick you, and it's hard to even get down for the iron sights. Um, other than that, guys, I mean, these guns are pretty much the same. The nice thing with the ZPAP, however, is because how they manipulated the 922R parts in it, uh, you get a Yugoslavian trigger as opposed to the TAPCO that normally would have come in these end paps. Now, we've got a uh, ALG defense trigger in this. This one happens to be the EL, which uh, is not their lightest trigger, but promise you it's really light um, to go from shooting these to that is night and day difference but I like them we used uh, definitive arms um, adapter here for our m4 uh, buffer tube and stock and fits like a glove works really well and uh, a magpul uh, k grip on it that's it uh, bd2 muzzle device versus the uh, the sugar scoop up there uh, slant brake standard slant brake um, other than that same guns now the earlier versions of these when these first hit the market were the thin receiver and the 
standard trunnions, no bulge. That was it. It was later they came out with this and everyone said, oh, thank God, the OPAP's back, right? And then they chrome-lined the barrel. The original OPAPs uh, and the original and all of the NPAPs did not have chrome-lined barrels. This is a first for Zestava, so that's kind of cool. I think if we uh, talk about Yugos and there's some of you out there looking to maybe buy a Yugo as your first AK or maybe your only AK, uh, way to go. I think it's a great buy for the money. They're super tough guns. Uh, you could easily go buy a ZPAP and be done. But let's talk about, you know, these are getting a little pricey now because of what's going on. They're 12, 13, 1400. Uh, you can find them in different furnitures and whatnot. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But what else can you buy if you want to get into a Yugo? Uh, there may be, maybe a couple new NPAPs left old stock somewhere. Once in a rare while, you see them pop up. Even about the last time I really saw like a batch come out was maybe two, three years ago. But you'll find them here and there or maybe new in the box on Gunbroker or something that nobody shot. Don't shy away from them, guys. The only controversy that came out of these, uh, there was a cracked receiver back here uh, between, like, I think it was between the rivet and this because there's just a little bit of space there. And it was on one of Rob Ski's videos, and it created a hubbub. But you got to remember, guys, the, that's a sampling of one. These guns have been out forever years and years and years and you never heard much about anything going wrong with them so and i've certainly i'm proof in the pudding and but again sample of one but i've had this thing forever and i lost count of how many rounds it's got to be over ten thousand. got to be uh i just shoot it and shoot it and shoot it and it keeps on going i did replace the uh recoil spring in it uh, because the Yugo springs are normally really, really soft. Uh, this one, the Z-Paps, are a little harder. They're a little stiffer than what you would have found normally. Um, but, I don't know, still uh, softer, so to speak. Uh, you may want to switch it out. I used an ALG, uh, or you can leave it alone. This one ran God knows how many thousands of rounds before that uh, video by Rob came out, and I replaced it. And it was just kind of, uh, I was doing up the gun anyways, and I guess insurance, kind of. So, not a big deal. Uh, getting back to what should you buy. Well, if you can find a lightly used NPAP or a new in the box or something, and you can save a bunch of money, why not? Go for it. If you can find an OPAP, awesome. Uh, they bring some good money, uh, I will say, though. And uh, you're essentially buying this same gun, except on this you get the chrome line barrel, which is a plus. Then again, eh, you know, I've run these Yugos forever, no chrome line barrel, super accurate, uh, no issues, no corrosion. Will it last longer? Guys, these guns are going to outlast me, my kids, my grandkids, and on and on and on. Um, I think we get caught up in a lot of this testing, 5,000 round tests. What other guns do we test 5,000 rounds? The ARs, uh, name me another gun. They're, they're, we don't. It just started out with AKs because there was so much uh, junk out there, frankly. There were essentially kit guns, century kit guns, and uh, IOs uh, that were out there, and, you know, they were junk. So... These tests started to kind of weed those guys out, and it's done a ton of good for the market. But when you're talking about an imported AK made in an arsenal, uh, there's you know not much to know. They're going to run and run and run. So uh, you know, other than weeding out some of those uh, bad apples, what's left in the market today? 
uh, not a problem. I, I it's kind of a waste of time uh, now, unless there's some new stuff comes out. Sure, but uh, you know, new guns come out. There's not uh, videos out there running five thousand, ten thousand rounds and tossing them in ponds and down a flight of stairs and whatever. You know, um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the old standards just seem to hang in there and do their job. Uh, what else can I say? If you find something else out there, an OPAP, a ZPAP, an NPAP, uh, other than the single stack guns or maybe some of the double stacks that had uh, the single stack bolt, if you can get a deal, buy it, guys. It's just as good. There's no problem. I wouldn't worry about it one bit. That's why I kind of put them all together here. Um, I will say I like the Bulge Trunnions, the OPAP, and the ZPAP better. Uh, are they going to hold up longer? Absolutely. Uh, but that NPAP does just fine. I did that one up like I did it because it was cheap and I didn't have to worry about taking a collectible gun and messing it up. And it's kind of my go-to. Uh, you guys see it in tons of videos. Look on my channel. I shoot it all the time. Let's take a few shots with the old ZPAP, shall we? Long trigger. Let's see here. Held open the bolt. Let's go see how this one shot. Well, guys, I was aiming up at this one here, and uh, we're kind of spread out here. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there were some other shots in there and whatever, but uh, yeah, that was not too impressive. I did shoot uh, at this here. And we've got one, two, three, four. I think I shot five there. One must have missed off to the side there. But uh, yeah, it's certainly a bit more opened up than the NPAP or uh, the M70, which was here. You know, uh, both are tighter than the ZPAP <laughs> with all those rounds through it. I don't know, maybe it was just me. I'm not saying that the, the Z-Pap's uh, not uh, as accurate as the others, but uh, man, kind of all over the place. And I had a good hold on that too, and this too. I don't know, we'll see. Kind of fun getting these uh, Yugos out here together at the same time. Haven't really done that in the past. So uh, kind of neat to put them all side by side. I will say recoil seems to be about the same on all of them, uh, even with that BD2 versus the slant brake. Uh, didn't technically feel any difference. Um, you know, they're all comfortable. It's uh, it's fun. We're going to have to do this some more with uh, some of our stuff compared to the old stuff and the new. So let's uh, keep shooting. Fun, 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 fun.
Okay guys, we're gonna do kind of a accuracy test. Uh, same ammo, same target. Uh, I did put the targets for the two iron sighted guns in the white so I can see the sight post. But we're going to just see five shots each, which prints better. Let's take a stab at it here. This is the ZPAP. Let's see. Alright, let's try the end pack, shall we? I don't know if we got ammo on here. Nope. Use the same mag here. And let me grab the M70 here. Oh, they're all M70s, right? All right, five rounds in here. Let's take a looky looky. Alright, well, we'll see what they did, huh? But, we might as well empty a mag in the head of our target down there. We got a few rounds laying around here. Let's see what we can do. I think we did. Do we have another one? There's a round, there's a round, everywhere around round. Two more. Yeah, what the heck. Let's toss these in here. And the trusty old Magpul Gen 1. Plastic ears on the mags. I've been using this mag for so many years, you have no idea. Dropped it, everything. No problem. All right. Night, night, Mr. Target. Now, we'll go 
see what we did. Okay, so we're going down to see how we did. I have no idea. So the, uh, let's see, the NPAP was in the center. The uh, ZPAP was to the right and the M70 was to the left. And then I put some headshots into the target with the uh, NPAP. Let's see how she did. I don't want any of you guys getting upset if the old M70 Century build beat out everything. I don't know. Let's see. Holy moly. Uh, so, NPAP. And that's with, of course, a three power. So we got one and four. Nice group. Was off a little there. Uh, next we go to the, oh boy, go to the ZPAP. And here we are, one flyer up here, three here, but missing. So, that must have been me, I don't know what the hell. I was had a hard time seeing this. And then we've got the M70 AV2, which, <laughs> one, two three four five uh, so of course with the scope that's kind of cheating but that's not a bad little group there but that gun hasn't shot off to the right like that before I don't know what's going on there so maybe it must have been me not being able to see the dot perfectly anyhow uh, make of it what you will it was just kind of for fun but that in sure is impressive isn't it uh, there you go. I almost forgot to show you the headshots. Hold on. So, there's the NPAP headshots. Now, I didn't have a bullseye to aim at, but uh, just kind of aiming center ahead, you know, so it's shooting a little low, but boom. Not a bad group. Pretty good. Hey guys, so thanks for spending the afternoon with us. We had a good time testing out all these Yugos. Hey, buy what you want, find what you want, whatever you get a good deal on. Uh, ZPAP is no slouch. These old guns are no slouches. And the NPAPs are good too. OPAP, whatever you find, they're all good. Take the time to research what you're getting in them and the differences. And uh, if you have any questions, post them below. And uh, we're gonna keep shooting these things and putting a few thousand more rounds through them. And uh, hey, we love our Yugos. So, thanks for everything, guys. Please check out our Facebook, check out our Instagram, check out our live stream, 7.30 Wednesday nights. We got our internet up and going awesome. Uh, gonna be with you tonight. So, hey, come by, check it out. Thanks again, and as always, Rockford Ordnance out.